Okay. We're getting serious here, people. Uh, so I've been doing a bunch of Atwood machine problems, and I make them more complicated and make them less complicated, but we're getting to the more realistic, as realistic as possible. Uh, let me just give a brief review of where we've been so far. I made a little map. So I started with a plain Atwood machine, which is a frictionless, massless pulley, and two masses hanging over it, and I found the acceleration. A half Atwood machine has one of the masses on a frictionless table, another one hanging over the edge. This is, I called this a half Atwood, an inclined half Atwood, because the same thing, but it's an inclined plane. Uh, then I did this was just one with, I found, use worked energy to find the final speed. And then I did a half Atwood machine with friction. Okay. And then I did an inclined half Atwood machine with friction. And then I did a Atwood machine with a heavy pulley. So you couldn't ignore the mass of the pulley. Now, here is my Atwood machine with a heavy rope. We're getting serious, people, and I'm excited. Okay. So, I'm going, how do you do this problem? Because you think about it, there's a lot going on here. Um, but let's, then there's multiple ways to approach this problem. But let me just start with the following. Let me call this y equal to zero. That's my zero position. Now, I, I have one coordinate, really, that I'm going to deal with. Um, I guess I could call it y. Um, but maybe I shouldn't do that because uh, I'm going to call it I'm going to call it s. So here's my my length s is from here to there, and so we, now we have part stuff over here that pulls down and part that pulls down this way. And if they're not balanced, it's going to accelerate. But as it moves, more of the rope is going to be on this side, so it's going to be essentially a normal Atwood machine where the masses are not constant. And that's where I want to start. So consider this is my plain, boring Atwood machine. And if I have mass one and two right there, I already did this problem. And I get the acceleration depends on the difference in the mass divided by the total mass. So M1, which is the total mass on this side, and it's negative because it's accelerating down this way. Uh, M1 minus M2 times G over M1 plus M2. So I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. But over here, I'm going to call this M1 prime and this M2 prime, right? So this is the mass on this side. It includes the mass M1 plus this other stuff, this part of the rope right here. And this one's going to include this mass plus this part of the rope. Now, what about this part of the rope right there? Well, that's not really accelerating, right? That's on the pulley. And I think that works. Okay. I might, I'm, I'm making up stuff here as I go, people. So... Okay, so first let's get the mass of this piece of the rope right here. So in order to do that, I'm going to define, I have a length of the rope is L, and the mass is M, the total mass is M. So I can define the linear mass density as the mass of the rope divided by the length of the rope. So with that, if I want to find the mass of this piece right here, let's call this, uh, let's just say M1 prime is going to be this mass, m1 plus this mass which is going to be the length of the rope which i call s times the linear mass density lambda i think that's good now what about m2 prime m2 prime is going to be mass 2 m2 plus this piece of the rope but how much is that well if this distance is l then this distance is going to be plus l minus s minus pi r. So if I take the total length and I subtract off the length of this piece, and then I need to subtract off this piece, which is half of a circle, right? And a full circle would be two pi r, so it's half a circle, so it's pi r. So that's that other length. So now I can uh, use these two masses and find my acceleration. So I'm just going to put my masses in here. So I get the acceleration is going to be negative m1. I'm going to put in m1 prime. So it's going to be m1 plus s lambda. And then m2, I'm going to get minus m2, which is going to be minus this, which is m2 plus l minus s minus pi r. 
yes, I'm getting a lot of parentheses and stuff. G, and then all of that over M1 plus M2. So this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to add these up. Let's say M1 plus S lambda plus M2 plus L minus S minus pi R. And that's it. I'm done. I'm technically done. But we should simplify a little bit. So let's just write this out. A equals. Um, so I'm going to put. I guess I should bring the. Let's leave this as negative m1 plus s lambda minus m2. And then I can get minus l, right? Because I multiply this out, plus s. Oh, there's a lambda right here. So lambda, lambda. So minus, so plus pi r lambda. All of that over m1 plus m2, I'm rearranging here. And this is a lam lambda there too. Plus s lambda, plus l lambda, minus s lambda, minus pi r lambda. And so you see right down here, those cancel. So that's cool. And you see up here, I have two s lambdas. So I'm going to get a equals, I'm going to leave the negative sign there because I, I just like it and I don't want to put it in. So I can get m1 minus m2. And then I have 2 plus 2s lambda plus pi r lambda, g, g. All of that over m1 plus m2 plus l lambda, that's a lambda, minus pi r lambda. That's it. So you see something really important here. Number one, the acceleration is not constant because uh, as this thing moves down, s is essentially proportional to y. So, uh, and I could find s in terms of y, right? I guess it'd be negative value. I, I See, that's what I think I, I, I should have called this positive y, um, but that's a little weird because I have a negative sign there. So I do have a little mistake. But I think it's okay because as it accelerates, the velocity increases, which changes s. So this is a non-linear problem that we have here because the acceleration is not constant. So you can't just say this is the acceleration. Well, I just did. But it depends on s. Okay, there's the s there. Just that one time? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so if I want to determine uh, how far this thing falls in a certain amount of time or how long it takes to fall over, which I'm going to do, then I need, I, I'm going to either set up a differential equation or I can do it numerically. And I'm going to do this numerically, so I'm going to include this in the video. But let's do the next thing. What, what, if, what if my rope is so light that I can ignore it? That would be the case where lambda approaches zero. The linear density is zero, it's a massless rope. So if I let lambda go to zero, uh, this term goes away, that term goes away, that term goes away, that term goes away, and I get this. So that's good. I want in the limit of a light massless rope, I want to get back to the problem of a light massless rope. So that's cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to the computer. My computer is over here. So I'm going to move over there. Why don't you come with me? And we'll do this problem numerically, and then we'll see what happens. And of course, I'm going to use uh, M1 equals 100 grams, M2 equals uh, 50 grams. Uh, I need the length of the rope. Let's say the length of the rope is that long. Let's say 20 centimeters. And let's say the radius is, um, let's see, it's, it's a, that big. Let's say two centimeters. I'm just making up stuff here, people. I'm making up stuff. So these are the values I'm going to use uh, when I do a numerical model. Oh, so I, I guess I should talk about how, how I'm going to do this numerical model first. So let's say that once I calculate the acceleration, I'm going to say... A, A is some function of S. Okay, that's I'm going to calculate that function. I'm going to calculate the value. And then I'm going to break this problem into small time steps of, let's say, 0.01 seconds. So in that time step, I can say the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So it's going to be V2 minus V1 over delta T. From this, I can solve for V2. So I get 
v2 equals v1 plus a as a function of s delta t. Now, if my time interval is small, the acceleration is not going to change that much. So this is a fairly appro appropriate equation to write. Take, calculate the acceleration, that's the first step, using this expression. Next, take the velocity that I start with, add the acceleration times delta t, and I get the new velocity. Now, after that, I'm going to say y2, I'm going to use the definition of average velocity, v average is the change in y over the change in time, which is y2 minus y1 over delta t. And I can solve that for y2 equals y1 plus v2 delta t. That's a really cheat right there. I'm gonna, I've just calculated the velocity. Instead of using the average velocity, I'm actually gonna use the final velocity. And that tends to work out fairly well. So now I can update the position of the mass, which is gonna change the acceleration. Uh, and then finally, I can just update the time, t1, t2 equals t1 plus delta t. And then I go back up here and repeat the whole thing, and I get whatever I want. Uh, so this is how we do a numerical calculation. I don't want to do it in person. I want to do it, uh, I want to have a computer do it. So I'm going to do it on the computer over there, like I said, and now I'm just wasting time. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, so here we are. I'm using GlowScript uh, Python. And the first thing I want to do is make a graph because I'm not going to graph something. And let's we're going to graph, let's say, position versus time. So the x title is going to be equal to uh, y. Let's just call it y in, in meters. And then, no, time. Time in seconds. And then the y title, the y axis will be the, the position. Now let's call it y in meters. And then I'm going to need to make a graph. Uh, F1 equals G curve, color equals blue. Okay. Now I need to put in my initial conditions and all my things. I have M1 equals 0.1, M2 equals 0.05, G equals 9.8, uh, L equals, what did I say? 20 centimeters. L equals 0.2. Uh, oh, the mass of the rope, the mass of the rope I didn't put. So let's call that m equals. Uh, let's see, it's at 50. Let's let's say it's a let's say it's a 30 gram rope, 0.03. I don't know why. Uh, R is 0.02. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing I need to put is my initial y position and my initial velocity, um, because when when I do those position update things, I need to know what those are. So I need to start with them. So let's just say y equals uh, negative. Uh, let's say it's 20 centimeter rope, so let's say negative, negative uh, 10, 0 0.1, and V equals 0. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I need to calculate the, the density, lambda, let's just call it lamb, equals uh, the mass M divided by L. Okay, now, I'm going to say while... Uh, Let's see, so if this thing goes, well, let's just say while the position is greater than, oh, it's starting at point, I want to start a little bit higher than that. Let's say negative point, um, let's see, so the radius is 2, so let's say 2 pi, so let's, say, let's just do a point 0.1. And let's go down and, no, let's say point 2.08. I'm just making up stuff here. We can change it. So while y is greater than the height of, uh, let's say, uh, 0.15, negative 0.15. So it's going to go drop a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm going to need to do is to calculate that acceleration. So this, this is right out that equation. Oh, I do need, let's say, s is equal to negative y. Because I, I told you I did that backwards. I think I need to do that. So I'm gonna, I have my equation sheet right here. I'm just gonna write it out. A equals negative m1 minus m2 plus two times s times lambda plus pi times r times lambda times g divided by, oops, m1 plus m2 plus l, oops, plus L times lambda 
I didn't want to type out lambda. Yeah, I know I'm that I'm that trivial. Pi minus pi times r times lambda. That's my acceleration. Okay, so now I can use that acceleration and calculate the new velocity. V equals v plus a times dt. Now I can update the position. Y equals y plus v times dt. Now, oops. And I just realized I didn't put those in here. T equals zero. Dt equals 0 0.0. 0 0.01 uh, and then finally I have update time t oh, let, let's, before we update time let's plot this so I'm going to say f1 dot plot uh, t y now update time t equals t plus dt will this run I don't know if it does I'm going to do something else if it doesn't I'm going to fix it okay let's see there's a good chance it could just blow up and something happened R is not defined. See? Okay. What? It ran. Look at that. Okay, but is it legitimate? Let's do this. Let's go up here and say F2 equals G curve. Color equals color dot blue. No, red. Label equals massless rope just just so we don't forget and so down here I'm going to redo the whole thing I'm gonna have another acceleration uh, another velocity another position so let's say uh, y2 equals negative uh, 0 0.08 um, v2 equals 0 yep now down here I'm gonna say let's just put it to before I plot stuff. A2 equals, now I'm going to use the case where I have a massless rope, so lambda is zero. So remember I have the expression for that was negative m1 minus m2 times g divided by m1 plus m2. That's the acceleration. Now I can up, use that acceleration to update the, the massless velocity, v2 equals v2. And I know, you, I know, don't worry about it. Okay plus a2 times dt and update the position y2 equals y2 plus v2 times dt and then I need to plot that f2 dot plot t y2 okay now let's check it out aha f2 plot is not a function g g curve I make mistakes on purpose just so you can see I'm a real person okay so, this is my normal pendulum, my normal Atwood machine, I'm sorry, and that should be a parabola. This should not be a parabola. I really should plot the velocity. Let's do that. Let's plot the velocity. Let's change this to velocity. And then down here, that's easier to fix. I can just plot V, V2. Check that out. Okay. Huh. So this one is constant. I don't think this is a straight line. It looks like a straight line, but I don't think it is. And we, aha, well, here's what we'll do. What if we put a very massive rope? A very massive rope with a mass of not 30 grams, but uh, 80 grams. Let's run it. Yeah, I think there is a bend. Let's, even, let's put it up even more. Let's say uh, 0.2, super heavy. Yeah, so that's bending a lot. I mean, not a lot, but you can tell it is not straight. Uh, so that indicates it is a non-constant acceleration. Non acceleration. Uh, it's going to fall a lot faster because uh, oh, the, the, the fastest this acceleration could be, though, uh, would the, fast, the greatest slope would be negative 9.8. It can't go more than that. But I, I think overall, I think this is working pretty well. I'm pretty excited with this. Um, so I think I have a couple more Atwood machine problems to do. Uh, I will eventually put them all together in a list. Uh, the, the next one I want to do is a, ha a Atwood machine with a heavy pulley and a heavy rope. What do you think about that? Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, I'll include the link to this code down below.